new discoveries are waiting out there. What new adventures can we see? What are the answers to the never-ending questions in your brain that's in a race to find the reason or the place from divine birth to outer space so that the truth of any case can be unfurled in the real world? Science in the real world. Hi, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Every day, people use machines to get work done. Today, we're going to talk about a special group of machines called simple machines. What is a machine? When you look around, you'll see that people use machines every day. Some machines help people travel from one place to another. Some machines help people lift heavy objects. Some machines help people to cut, to drill, and to mix objects. A machine is any device that helps us to do work. Work is the result of a force moving an object. A machine helps us to do work. So, is this rake a machine? Sure is. It helps to do work. The rake moves the leaves. You wouldn't think it, but this baseball bat is a machine too. When you hit a baseball, the ball moves. That's work too. Work is done when a force moves an object. Every machine needs a force to make it work. Force is a push or a pull that changes the motion or shape of an object. It's force that produces movement. Force is also related to distance. If you change the force, you change the distance. For example, if someone lightly taps a ball using a little force, the ball will only move a short distance. But if you use a lot of force and hit the ball real hard, the ball will travel a longer distance. Scientists show this relationship using a simple formula, work equals force times distance. We use machines to make work easier. In this program, we're going to concentrate on special kinds of machines called simple machines. A simple machine has a few or no moving parts and there are six kinds of simple machines. Inclined plane, wedge, screw, lever, pulley, and wheel and axle. Inclined plane. An inclined plane is a sloping surface that makes it easier to move objects to a higher or lower place. An example of an inclined plane is a ramp. Roads have ramps that help people drive their cars onto and off of a highway. You've even seen inclined planes at the playground. A slide is an inclined plane. Inclined planes can be very helpful when moving objects. Let's say we need to get a car from a high place to a lower place. The shortest direction would be straight down. One way is to lower the car with a lift. A lift requires a great amount of effort. However, by using an inclined plane, a car travels a longer distance, but less effort is needed to move it from a high place to a lower place. See the relationship between force and distance? By using an inclined plane to lower the car, we decrease the amount of effort or force he needed but increase the distance the car moved. When we use the inclined plane, the same amount of work is done, but the work is easier to do. Wedge. A wedge is really an inclined plane that is used as a tool. Wedges are used to raise objects, like when you jam a door wedge under a door. It raises the door just enough and exerts a strong force against it. Wedges are also used to split objects apart. 
An axe is a wedge attached to a handle. Almost all cutting machines use wedges like a saw or a knife. The nail uses a wedge too. A wedge is a simple machine used to raise objects or split an object apart. Because they're machines, wedges need force to make them work. How much force you need depends on the angle between the surfaces of the wedge. Let's say you're putting tent stakes into the ground. You have two to choose from. The orange plastic stake has a larger angle between the surfaces. The metal stake has a smaller angle. What stake do you think will need more force to drive into the ground? Well, let's see. If you were to try to put the plastic stake into the ground with your hands, you probably wouldn't be able to apply enough force. You may need a hammer to help. Putting the metal stake into the ground is easier because it requires less force. So the smaller the angle of the wedge surface, the less effort and force you need to make wedges work. Screw. A screw is a simple machine. Believe it or not, a screw is adapted from the inclined plane. If you follow the thread from the tip of the screw, you'll see an inclined plane constantly curving upwards around a shaft. A screw is a simple machine used to apply tremendous force with very little effort. People use screws every day. Screws are used to hold things together. Screws are used to open and close vices and clamps. And they're used in drill bits too. The screw is better at increasing force than other simple machines. That's why a screw is used in a car jack. Each time the screw makes a complete turn, it moves a load a certain distance along the screw. The distance depends on the amount of space between each overlap of the inclined plane. The distance between any two neighboring peaks is called the pitch. In order to lift the car with the car jack, you have to turn the screw many times. With the screw, it takes a little effort to lift the car over a long distance. Here's another example. Let's say you want to put these two pieces of wood together and you can either use a nail or a screw. Using the nail would take more force. It would take less force to turn the screw. That's because a longer distance is covered when you turn the screw. Longer distances decrease the effort needed. Lever. A lever is a simple machine. A lever is simply a rigid object or bar that pivots around a fixed point called a fulcrum. A lever reduces the amount of effort needed to lift or move an object. A good example of a lever is a seesaw. All levers have three parts. The first part is the object that is going to be moved, called the load. In this case, it's the kids on the seesaw. You also need a fulcrum. That's the fixed point where a lever turns. The third part of the lever is the effort. That is the effort or force you need to move the load. When you put force on the opposite end of the lever, the child or load moves. A lever is any bar that pivots around a fixed point or fulcrum. There are three kinds of levers. The first type of lever is called a third class lever. A good example of a third class lever is a rake. A third class lever has the fulcrum at one end, load on the opposite end, and the force in the middle. The next type of lever is called a second class lever. A good example of second class lever is a wheelbarrow. On a second class lever, the fulcrum is on one end, the effort is on the opposite end, 
and the load is in the middle. Another example of a second class lever is a bottle opener. Here is the fulcrum on one end, the load is the bottle cap, and in the middle and the effort opposite the fulcrum. The third type of lever is called first class lever. A seesaw is a great example of a first class lever. On a first class lever, the fulcrum is in the middle, the load is on one end, and the effort is on the opposite end. A hammer is another example of a first class lever. Here is the fulcrum, the load is the nail, and the effort is applied to the opposite end of the bar. Wheel and Axle The wheel and axle is a simple machine made up of a wheel connected to a post. The post is called an axle. Wheels and axles help people apply more force or lift a heavy load with less effort. An example of a wheel and axle used to apply more force is when you use a wrench to turn a bolt. The wrench is the wheel and the bolt is the axle. When you turn the wrench, it moves a greater distance than the axle, but it takes less effort to turn it. The axle moves a shorter distance, but it turns with greater force. A ski lift is a good example of a wheel and axle. The large wheel turns on an axle, winding the cable around and lifting the load. We use wheels and axles every day. For example, cars use wheels and axles. A screwdriver is a wheel and axle. The handle of the screwdriver is the wheel and the shaft is the axle. A doorknob is a wheel and axle too. The actual knob is the wheel and the shaft is the axle. A special kind of wheel is called a gear. Gears are toothed wheels. Gears can transfer forces from one part of a machine to another. Pulley. A pulley is a simple machine that is made up of a wheel on a post with a rope or cable around the wheel. Pulleys can make work easier to do by changing the direction of a force. For example, a pulley is used to lift heavy objects. As you pull down, you change the direction of the force. That makes the work easier! This type of pulley is called a fixed pulley. Another type of pulley is called a movable pulley. By using one movable pulley, you can reduce the amount of force needed to use by one half. A pulley changes the direction or amount of force as demonstrated in the opening and closing of a heavy theater curtain. Pulleys are used everywhere in the real world. Well, there you have it. All six simple machines. The incline plane, the wedge, the screw, the lever, the wheel and axle, and the pulley. Now you know that simple machines help us to do work and make our lives just a little bit easier in the real world.